Hi. Hello. So, hi everybody. Um, I'm Jeff and this is Jess, my colleague and friend from the other side of the world. Some of you will have had the pleasure of meeting or at least interacting with Jess if you've, if you've worked with me in the past then uh, you'll probably have emails from her if not phone calls and some of you will have the pleasure of meeting her in person uh, but Jess helps me with all sorts of things basically keeping my my business going and keeping me going at times um, so you will have you'll speak to her. and we thought this is a great opportunity to have, uh, have a little chat uh, even though we're in completely different time zones um, um, if this works well, maybe we'll have a few more of them. A um, little bit of an unscripted chat. This one was something that Jess suggested around procrastination uh, and whether that gets better or worse or easier or harder uh, in, a, in a sort of pandemic lockdown situation. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, let us know whether you think it's good or not. Add your comments in the comments field uh, and maybe we'll do some more. So we finally got around to having a chat about procrastination. Yes. <laughs> How long did it take? <laughs> I don't know. A week or so? Not yeah. too bad. Not too, no, bad. not too bad. Everything's a little bit slower these days, isn't it? It is. It is, yeah. So it'd be interesting to see what things are like on this. Because I, I always imagine... I've never been to New Zealand. It's always on one of my places that I'd love to go. Maybe, maybe that'll never happen now. Who knows? But or maybe when it does, it'll mean even more. Um, yeah. But I always associate that part of the world with being a lot more relaxed and slow and um, just mm -hmm. easier and, and not so rushed. So, is, is procrastination more of a thing over in New Zealand? Do you think? That's a good question. I think uh, there's definitely less of um, yeah a rush to do things which can be great and can be frustrating if you want something done and someone's just so chilled about doing it it can take a while to happen um whether that's procrastination or just part of the nature of some kiwi people mm. i'm not sure um but it's definitely it is it's like i remember first moving here and phoning up to get a, a tax number and had a couple of questions so called them and got through immediately to someone in New Zealand they were super friendly really helpful and that was that and I just thought wow that is so different from being in the UK you'd be on hold for ages and have to go through to someone and might not get through to someone in the UK um but it happened really so, quickly yeah that okay. was quick that was a good one um, so there is, there's a difference though so between something just taking longer because you're going at a slower pace as to as opposed to putting something off and not not doing it mm -hmm. so you, do, you, you just get a it, yeah it's happening and it's just going at a slightly slower pace mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and i imagine it's because um there was no need to go at a faster pace for a long time because new zealand only has really become bigger and more i think connected to the rest of the world since lord of the rings i've heard okay it's really like expanded so i think 20 30 years ago the, the population was small the life was quite slow there wasn't a need to do things quickly yeah um and now there probably is more especially in cities uh, and as you've got more people coming from other countries who are used to a faster mm. pace um, I think that probably influences it a bit. Mm. Yeah, I always find the procrastination thing interesting in the UK because we have, and it is there. It is cultural because I, you know, I, I used to work in lots of different countries, and you'd, you'd hear, or oh, when you when you're over here, we just mm -hmm. turn up ten minutes late. That's just kind of cultural, um, or you know, it'll, we'll we'll have multiple things going, or another culture. So no, no, no. Once we start something, we 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 we, we do it. But it, mm. most people would associate a cup of tea and a queue with England, wouldn't they? I think the UK. Um, yeah, absolutely. And a cup of tea is a great way to, to procrastinate. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm just going to go make a brew. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we were having a chat over email, weren't we, about whether procrastination has increased or decreased since, mm. since the coronavirus pandemic. And what's, what's your instinct? 
personally, personally yeah. uh, I have been procrastinating more. Um, but it's almost more of a lower motivation, okay. which I imagine is, is still linked to procrastination. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think it's a, it's a creative fatigue perhaps. And all I can think is that my brain is taken up with looking at Twitter and looking at the news and speaking with friends and trying to just figure out what's going on. And actually sitting down at my laptop, there's not much brain space left to focus yeah. and to work and be creative and be motivated. Um, so whether, I guess that is a type of procrastination, um, but it's not necessarily because I don't want to do it. Yeah. It's just my brain is like, nah, not today. <laughs> there's yeah. too much else for me to figure out. Um, Yeah, I think yeah. It's, a, it's a form of of distraction, isn't it? And, mm. and so again, some of the people that I, I've been speaking to said, said similar things, but in a kind of different way. When you said about motivation and that sense of, you know, a lot of people would say to me, like, there's just not as much happening. So it's a little bit like your story of you know, phoning up the tax authority and getting that code really, really quickly. People just mm. know that less stuff is happening now. Um, mm -hmm. most companies are putting out you know don't contact us because we're overwhelmed with calls and we're trying to prioritize mm -hmm. this that and the other um, and so they just know that it's stuff isn't going to happen as quickly so that motivation uh, to mm -hmm. start something is lower because your autonomy about getting it complete and the, the chances of success are lower so a lot of people will put off something if they don't think they can do it successfully Mm -hmm. and if it has dependencies upon other people or parties that, that just aren't as engaged, bought in, or have the capacity for it, mm. that's a big factor. And the other thing I think you said there is that sort of brain capacity of, well, if I'm not f able to focus because I'm thinking about other things or I'm worried about other things, mm. then I, I just, my energy somewhere else. And it might sound a little bit uh, over dramatic, but the, the, as human beings, our body will naturally divert energy to the, the more important functions. And at the moment, when some, mm. when all this uncertainty is around the air, it, it sounds over dramatic, but it's a sort of self-preservation is the priority, right? You might not feel mm -hmm. scared like in a, in, a, in, a, in a really scary situation, but there is a certain element of fear because we don't know what's going on and we don't know the impact it's going to have. And there's so many unanswered questions. Mm. Um, I think that's where your body is naturally diverting those resources. Um, yeah some people i think will probably try and blank that out not necessarily consciously but there will be a, mm -hmm. a little element of, of denial and just right, i'm just going to ignore that and mm -hmm. I, i'm going to use my work as an option uh, as an opportunity to to divert my attention from what's going on out there because i can mm -hmm. control this yeah. so i suppose I'm, I'm a little bit lucky in, in a way and you know i could i could channel my work into something that was largely within my control my writing Mm -hmm. uh, or I could go away and I could create a video or something like that. Um, yeah. Or I have my one-on-one -on -one coaching where I don't need any anyone else apart from the person that I'm coaching. Mm. Uh, but if I was involved in a team, for example, and there's lots of things going on, and the organization is able, isn't able to focus, that would be a lot harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think part of work especially if you're used to working from home or working for yourself focusing on your work is almost takes you back into normalcy and you can kind of what you said ignore or forget about what else is going on in that moment because that's that is already part of your routine yeah. so I wonder the difference between people who usually work from home versus people who don't um having said that I usually work from home and I'm still finding it hard mm. to work as normal. Um, Do you have any rituals? Sort of part of a normal routine? Uh, tea. Mm -hmm. um, not really. Trying to ch like checking emails first, start of the day. Um, actually, I've... I've Funny, brought in more of a morning routine mm. since being in lockdown than before, um, which normally involves going for a walk, which I found so nice. Yeah, and then getting on my laptop. 
Because um, I found that's quite a, that that in all the people I've spoken to, that is a really common pattern of the, of the mm. people that have found it easier to get to keep in the zone is they they stick to their routine because it kind of gets them mm. in that mindset of I'm going to work even if even if they're not used to working from home they'd go through a similar kind of routine that they would mm. um, and I, you know I see a lot of people I don't know whether you've been on the Zoom calls where people are still in their pajamas you know they they obviously haven't brushed their hair and that's fine yeah. But I don't think it necessarily helps them get in the mindset of okay, and mm -hmm. now I'm ready, to, ready to to work, mm -hmm. you know, uh, whatever that work is. And if you haven't got those normal routines, I, I'm, I'm not a big routine person because I, I, I'm often staying in, used to be staying in different hotels, and I didn't have the same mm. commute and things. Um, but I found doing that, having that routine of okay, get up, have a shower, have a shave, do my hair, have some breakfast, have a cup of tea say hello to the kids and then mm -hmm. walk to my office which is in the garden that yeah. sort of gets me grounded uh and so I've, mm -hmm. I've, like you i've developed more of a routine because i've got more of a routine available to me yeah rituals are a really powerful thing i think yeah people say and i i, I think um people might find this really really weird and um, so i'm uh, potentially about to embarrass myself but if I'm sitting down and having uh, having dinner, mm. I'm eating something, like that, eating a lasagna or something. Uh, I think oh, I'm quite thirsty. About to have a drink. Um, if I pour, uh, if I pour from the jug of water into my glass of water, sometimes without realising it, I'll go back to eating, and I haven't actually drunk the water. But pouring mm. the water into the jug has a similar effect to me actually drinking it. I feel less thirsty. And that's that's the ritual. So a lot of people will you know, make a mm. really good uh, sort of ceremony, if you like, about opening the chocolate bar and taking their time over it and, and breaking it up into certain sections and getting the pleasure from the ritual as much as from from the eating or the drinking. Mm. It might sound weird, but that that's a really powerful thing for human beings. That sense of ritual and and, and ceremony mm -hmm. and take advantage of it is is I guess what I'm saying there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and that 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 does help. And but I am more of a morning person. Mm -hmm. I always have been. I've I've always achieved more in the morning than I have in the afternoons. Mm. Whereas uh, I know a lot of people, oh, the morning's the worst time for them. And I think yeah. that's fine as well. You know, that's that's part of your routine. I think play to your strengths mm. is another is another thing. Yeah, and knowing that is is great. Um, And I think I read somewhere of calling it the Einstein hour, almost knowing where you're the most focused in the day and trying to turn off any distractions in that time. So mm. I, if I feel like for most people it's morning or evening um, rather than in the afternoon. I might be wrong. Um, but there is something about that getting up, even getting straight on the computer for an hour, mm -hmm. doing some things and then going away and then coming back. Um, I'm definitely an evening worker yeah. um, and try to shut my laptop down by 10 p.m. because if I don't, I'll have a second wind and be going for hours. Yeah. Um, but actually working in the morning and evening works well with time difference. So that's nice. And sort of in the day, not doing as much isn't yeah. quite as awful. But that notifications thing is really important as well. Mm. So I, I, it's taken me a while um, to to do this. I had to be when I was working from home before. I didn't really turn my notifications off, but now I'm getting more mm. notifications. I, I consciously do that, so mm -hmm. I can do that on my machine. I can do it on my phone. But uh, Tim Urban, who um, has got one of the the biggest TED talks on procrastination, it's hilarious. If you haven't mm -hmm. seen it, watch it. Um, he he tweeted the other day about how he makes sure his phone and whatever his his other devices. Mm. are really difficult to get to so he, mm. my phone's here i could pick it up and i could start playing with it but the notifications aren't flashing so i don't get distracted by it mm -hmm. but he would say that that's still a distraction for him if he's stuck he would just get his phone out and start checking twitter or whatever so he puts oh, yeah. it somewhere really difficult to get to so it's actually a pain for him being mm. quite lazy to get up go over to the other side of the room reach to the top of the cupboard and get mm -hmm. it and he knows I, I can't bother to do that so i just won't and if you know what you're like if you know where your traps are you can like, sort of write the rules of the game to help you succeed if you like if that makes sense yeah yeah 
Um, and that's a huge one, I think, the notifications one uh, and just having your phone there because sometimes I'll find you go to load a website and even if it doesn't load immediately, I'm like, oh, let me just see what's going on on Instagram. And then before you know, you get stuck in a hole and you look up and you're like, oh, what was I doing? Yeah. Um, so getting rid of a phone is good. And even like I deleted a couple of apps from my phone okay. in, in the last, just in the last couple of weeks, social media things to just because there's only so much you can see of other people yeah. <laughs> complaining about being in lockdown or trying to <laughs> pretend to have a great time or baking bread. And I thought, actually, this isn't helpful right now. Um, and I don't need more just to consume more and more yeah. content. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say something that's potentially controversial and dangerous then. Um, no, mm -hmm. That's over. That's over egging it. But So one of the things that I think a lot of people are doing, we're doing, we, and we like a jigsaw anyway, but we've been doing a lot of jigsaws because that's what you do, yeah. by, get locked down by, by a jigsaw. Um, yeah. and we're in the middle of a really difficult one, probably one of the most difficult ones we've done actually for a long time. Um, and you can be sitting there for ages looking at this stuff, thinking, oh, where does this go, where does this go? Where does this go? And you say, oh, no. And you say, oh, that's it for the day. And then you come back tomorrow, the next day, and you can immediately put eight pieces in that if you'd have sat there for another hour last night, you wouldn't have got. Mm -hmm. and I think yeah. having that little bit of a breakdown again, picking up your phone, checking Instagram for a couple of minutes, not only is a bit of a sort of reward for your brain, if you like, but it, it does mm -hmm. break your focus sometimes. And that's a good thing mm -hmm. because then you can come back with a, with a new burst of focus. I yeah. think that time boxing is really, really useful. So something that people, this, even before this pandemic, one of the one of the key things that I saw in people who would label themselves as a procrastinator and say is that mm -hmm. when it gets down to it, it's, it's the sense of overwhelm, that it's just too big mm -hmm. a thing, that they don't want to start it. But actually, if you break it down into smaller chunks or just have small time boxes where it's not a case of I'm going to go until I finish it, it's I'm going to do as much as I can in 20 minutes. And that's it. Once 20 minutes is up, I stop. Mm -hmm. And setting some constraints whether it's, you know, when I, when I write, I'm just going to write until I've written a thousand words or 500 words and that's it. I stop. Yeah. The, those, those constraints can be really liberating hmm. uh, and enabling and yeah. then reward yourself once you've hit them. Mm -hmm. So do you think that's one of the having constraints or time boxes or breaking it down into small chunks is one of the better uh, tools to have to just get started on something? Cause I think that's a big thing with procrastinating is, if you can just get started and then often you'll get into it and you'll go for longer than you, you plan to. So do you think breaking it down into smaller chunks is one of the best ways to just sort of get that, get those first five minutes going or is there yeah. any other thing you, you do just to. I think the time boxing is really, really, really useful. Um, mm. And whether it's, uh, so you can actually make use of your devices there, set a timer on there, or these mm -hmm. little uh, tomato timers, the cooking timers in the kitchen, they're, they're really useful. Um, but I did, um, and so this, this, this is it's branching off slightly, but it's, it's very, I think it's very related. And I did mm. quite a lot of work over the, over the last couple of years on, on establishing habits, trying to help teams get into a, a habit of establishing habits. Um, mm -hmm. And two of the, two of the books that, that stand out for me on here, one's called, tiny habits and one's called atomic habits but they've both got kind of the same message which is do something really 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 small like mm. stupidly small <laughs> uh, and the example that they gave was flossing your teeth so um rather than say i'm going to floss my teeth every day say i'm going to floss one tooth mm -hmm. just one and that's a really achievable target for people it's nowhere near overwhelming it's not daunting and to be honest, it's better than not flossing any. Mm -hmm. When you get yeah. around to it, it's almost impossible for someone to stop after flossing just one. And then mm. everything after that is a bonus. And I think yeah. that that sense of really, really small habits, but also tying it into something that you already do. So mm. after I brush my teeth, which you've already established that habit, I will floss one tooth. Mm -hmm. Those two tactics, as well as setting a time limit on it, is you know, really, I think... I, I found that to be really, really helpful in just doing mm -hmm. something that you know you, sh you should do and you do kind of want to do, but you always find a reason not to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And what do you think are the, this is, I'm hoping for me, you're going to say lots of things, are the okay. benefits of procrastinating during a pandemic? Um, well, I think one of the benefits that people are finding at the moment is actually a lot of the stuff that they thought was absolutely crucial and had to get done. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's yeah. a, that's valued, valued at, a, at an individual level and at an organizational level. You know, I'll, I'll often go into an organization and talk to them about taking an agile approach to the way that they work. Mm -hmm. And they think they've heard some buzzwords about agile and they think, yeah, okay, that's, that's kind of cool. Faster uh, time to market <laughs> goes down. That's, that's kind of good. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Engage people. Yeah. All right. I'll have some of that. But what, what else it involves, they're not really that sure of. And I, I've yet to find an organization that in order to be successful, shouldn't be cutting down on the number of stuff number of things that they've got ongoing mm. they're all doing more pieces of work than they can do with the people they've got um and they have this sort of multitasking fallacy and actually if they stopped doing as much stuff they'd get more stuff done but when i tell them that they kind of well yeah i get that Jeff. that makes sense i uh, would mm. love to be able to stop doing this stuff but we can't either and they've always got loads of reasons loads of excuses like oh, we've got customers we've got contracts you know these people would have nothing to do lots of mm -hmm. reasons and in their mind it's it's a fact it's it's a truth that they can't stop this stuff but now they've had to mm -hmm. and the world hasn't ended yeah and it's kind of a oh okay so if we were quite ruthless in what we were doing we could do that and it would be beneficial and yet the people mm -hmm. are, are, some of their people are, are sort of taking a breath and that's again sounds quite mm -hmm. dramatic but quite a lot of the people i'm talking to um you know they haven't had to go on their commute so they've got an extra couple of hours to themselves mm -hmm. and their mindset is significantly better yeah they've got all mm -hmm. this other stuff going on but it's it's a bit of an eye-opener for people okay so i don't need to do that stuff and it is a bit of a realization as to what's really important. And I'm not talking philosophical uh, stuff like that, but actually being able to ruthlessly prioritize and say, if I can only do X amount of stuff today, mm -hmm. that be. And because some of those constraints have been enforced on people, either because, like me, I've got kids at home that need our attention, um, or it's uh, you know, the people have been doing this for a while and they realize that if you're on a screen, all day you know when get exhausted quicker so you can't do as much stuff so mm -hmm. people have just realized that we need to take more of a sustainable pace to this thing it's actually i think mm -hmm. that's one of the things that um at the moment where we are right now so in the uk just four weeks into lockdown did you guys were you guys in have you been locked down for longer than that up. yeah almost four weeks That's like it. two days behind you i think okay all right mm -hmm. so it's it's we've been taking it very slow and there's there's, mm. there's not really been this sense of this is going to be a long time i think the government is starting to drip feed that message into the population i think to mm. begin with it was it would have been a shock to the system for, for people to say okay it's going to be like this for a year i don't know whether it is or not but it would have been that would have <laughs> been a, a massive whoa no we can't cope with that so a little bit of the time yeah. But that sense of short termism, we can do this for three weeks, that mm -hmm. level of sustainability now to a, okay, it might be a few months. That's a different level of sustainability. Mm. You know? um, this idea of keeping it for the long term, the marathon, not a sprint type thing. And actually those are the words that um, my daughter's principal used this morning. And so she's gone back to school today, school at home um, mm -hmm. saying that this is, we're, we're trying to do things at a sustainable level so they will be doing fewer lessons the lessons will be shorter mm -hmm. because we're we're treating this as if this is a sort of medium to long term thing if we're wrong what have we lost but if we're yeah. wrong working at too fast a pace that's a bad thing mm. uh, and so yeah that that sense of be kind to yourself mm -hmm. in what you can realistically achieve um and play to your strengths Mm -hmm. know what be be much more aware of your energy levels and be, you know, realize that it's okay to to take a break to check out and say Do you know what i could sit here looking at a screen for the next hour but i'm not going to be any use to anyone whereas yeah. if i took a walk 
for 20 minutes and came back, I'd be useful again. Mm. And that's self-awareness. You're not going to have people being able to see you. You know, when I used to work at um, BT, I used to sit in it. So some people, my colleagues, Paul, Nigel, Steph, uh, they, they would they would become aware of me and you know mm -hmm. when i'm getting antsy or tired or whatever and even if i didn't notice it they'd say jeff do you want to go for a little break mm -hmm. and i we haven't got that i'm in my shed no one's here looking over me saying jeff i think you need a break yeah so we need to be a little bit more self-aware of these things mm. do you think um so potentially stay in lockdown for longer well it sounds like you the uk is going to stay in lockdown for another few weeks at least did i hear yeah definitely another three or weeks like at least yeah uh, yeah do you think um i know you, you said earlier about feeling like you're kind of settling into it's becoming more normal now being sort of locked down and working mm -hmm. from home do you think now it's if it's lockdowns being extended people will procrastinate less as it becomes more normal and they have new routines or do you think it could be extended and it becomes like oh this is just too much what's the point there's this much bigger thing and there's so much uncertainty does it there's so much more important things happening in the world does it even matter if i do this project or something and um, do you think there could be a big lack of motivation if lockdown keeps going on or do you think people will settle into a new normal and it'll be okay I think uh, I saw a, I don't think it's a meme, I, I, I'm out of touch with the terminology, I think it was just <laughs> just an image, uh, but it was mm -hmm. a funny image and it was the roller corona, I don't know, it's like a roller coaster, just up and down, up and down and loop the loops and things, about uh -huh. how, you know, you can be, oh no, this is just, this is dreadful, I can't cope with this anymore, oh this is alright, it's quite good fun actually, oh no, no, there's despair, and I think everyone yeah. is going through this sort of roller coaster of emotions, I know that this is um, buzzword bingo, but um, <laughs> because I don't think it's everyone is is different in a fixed state, so I don't think mm. it's the case that I'm not a procrastinator. I think there are days when I procrastinate more and days when I procrastinate less, and I would say I would guess the same for you as well. Mm -hmm. And part of that will be linked to my emotions in the day and how I'm feeling about the world and the messages that I've read in the news and what's going on with my friends and family and. You know, the state of the project mm -hmm. but i think that's quite normal anyway if you if you took this out of the pandemic if I, there would be days when i got a lot more done and days when i, I felt i got nothing done i mm. think that's quite yeah. normal but i think it's just magnified right now so mm -hmm. being aware of where you are on that roller coaster and where if you're working with other people where they are um mm. and saying Do you know what that's all right today not a great day um yeah. but there's always tomorrow Mm -hmm. um, and I think, yeah, we will develop that sense of normal. I, I'd like to think that we'll we'll develop a greater sense of self awareness and collective self awareness. I think we should come out this with a greater sense of empathy mm -hmm. with, our, with our colleagues, with our family, with our friends, mm. um, and with other parts of the world. And I think that's that's something that I think we we you know we we kind of need it. Um, yeah. So. I'm not saying this is a good thing. Don't get me wrong. It's, you know, but I think there's mm. there's a lot of good that that can come out of it. So, yeah, I think we will develop a new sense of normal. Mm. But in in a way, I would say it's a, a sort of realization of what was normal anyway, but we were kind of pretending wasn't. Yeah, and it's probably highlighting things that weren't working before. And I know people in this during these last few weeks who seem to have been really quite innovative and thinking about a post COVID world and what's going to happen and how businesses can kind of pivot and adapt and do different things. And so I think you're right. It's, it's sort of highlighting what could be done better or that wasn't working and, um, and that realization of, or having more time and realizing that maybe we do want some more downtime in our lives. Uh, and then how do we fit that into work? going forward when things when we're allowed out um yeah. yeah and and that's another thing I don't, that's i was kind of thinking about with procrastination 
some people who those people who are being quite forward like trying to think in six months time in a year's time post covid coming up with the there's been like hackathons i know that have, different countries have been doing them to try and figure out what's going to happen with businesses and mm. webinars about the future um which i is great and it's awesome that people are doing that and can think about that but i'm very much like my brain doesn't even want to go there right now and it's quite yeah. in the what is happening at the moment because it's still like a lot of a lot of things to figure out just for the now and for the next few days or the next few weeks um so what what do you think about that the, the people who are managing to almost be okay this is what's happening now but i'm going to plan for all this stuff and i'm going to be extra creative and really is this is yeah what why am i not feeling like that well I, I, but i think you've you've gone i think you've brought it in another really interesting uh dynamic there which is mm. the time frames so yeah. the sense of overwhelm of you know what, what do i need to do something for six months time 12 months time again mm -hmm we have the sort of temporal displacement in the sense of I can't really imagine that I don't, I don't want to put myself in that, that, that time frame, mm. and So I won't bother. But if you can get a mixture of the here and now and the future, mm. then you get a sense of progress. You get a sense of momentum you get a sense of completion while also not just being too short termist. And so making sure that you've got, you know, a couple of things on your, on your to-do list that you definitely can focus on today. And also a little bit of time thinking about the future, I think is, is a pretty good mix. Mm. Speaking personally, I think I was in a little bit of, I was about to say denial, but I think also a little bit of naive optimism. Mm. So it's perhaps a combination of the two in that I thought, oh, this will, this will be over relatively quickly. And so I, I, I didn't really put a lot of effort into thinking about, for example, turning a lot of my training courses into online offerings. Mm. Because I thought, well, once this is over, I didn't really see myself doing a lot of online training. Um, so... I'm just going to let this one ride for a bit. Um, mm. And it seems like that may well be, um, I, might, I was a bit too naive and optimistic uh, around the timeframes there. And so if I do want to carry on training, maybe that is something I need to do. But have I really done a lot on that? Not a lot. I have kind of procrastinated on that. But what mm. has helped me is thinking, well, what could be useful to me if we do come out of this quickly and if we don't? So is there mm -hmm. a sort of Venn diagram of if things change for the, for the better really quickly, then I would do this. If things don't change very quickly, I would do this. What's in mm -hmm. the sweet spot? What's in the middle? Um, yeah. And so that's, that's helped me get a little bit of more motivation where I might mm -hmm. procrastinated more. Um, but that took a little bit of time out and said, okay, well, let's just shut things mm -hmm. down for a minute, get creative and you get a whiteboard or a piece of paper and actually literally draw a Venn diagram. Mm -hmm. Um, and that that sense of changing medium is also quite useful for a lot of people when they find themselves stuck. If they're stuck at a screen typing on a keyboard, step away, get a notepad and pen, um, mm. go for a walk and talk to, talk into a dictaphone. These different types of medium can just unblock you and you can find a different way uh, of, of making progress. Mm. Yeah. Um, and... meditating that's what i there's something that's kind of that i've thought about we can't really go out so this is a great chance mm. to sort of go in a little bit and i think people are doing that reassessing their life is a bit of a big thing but reassessing at least sort of their work because that's a big thing that's changed um their habits their day-to-day -day, their beliefs a little bit mm. um and maybe that is to do with travel um and flights like that's something i've thought of flying back to the UK say once a year and mm. and just looking at how the um the earth seems to be a little bit better with us all inside and thinking okay do when things when we can fly again do I want to be flying as often um so there's something kind of nice about this time of being able to reflect a bit that we've all sort of been forced to do and that can be quite uncomfortable um which maybe is another reason why some people are thinking a lot about the future and just doing stuff so they don't have to think about that. Mm. Um, when you're stuck at home more and you're not going out in the evening, you're not doing as much, you're forced a bit more to go yeah. in. 
Um, yeah. And I wonder if that's a reason some people are not procrastinating and doing a lot still, um, doing online courses and learning, you know, getting on Duolingo and learning a language and having Zoom quizzes every night and things because mm. it's, we still crave distraction. We do, of- and, and you know, some of us are, mm. some of us are, I'd say luckier and that, that might not be the right word, but just have different circumstances, right? So mm-hmm. um, it's certainly finding some time for a little bit of meditation during the day with a one-year-old is tough. Um, mm. And, you know, a lot of people don't have as much quiet time uh, mm-hmm. and or space. Um, so yeah, I, I know you've, 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 you've sh- have shared with people uh, before. Mm-hmm. And you know, if you've got a lot of people in the same space, it's quite hard to, to do it. Not impossible. And there's mm-hmm. always times when you can, you can make that space. Uh, mm-hmm. Taking the dog for a walk if you've got a dog. Um, putting some earphones in and listening to some, some, something quiet that it's, it's possible. And it doesn't have to be, you know, as, as big a deal as, as you might make it in terms of, you know, completely reevaluating your life values and what kind of person you Mm -hmm. want to be and things like that. It could just be a a really useful tool for developing that self-awareness. So if you're finding yourself Mm -hmm. almost beating yourself up mentally that you're not making progress, just mm-hmm. just stop take a little bit of time and just think about what's going on for you what messages are you giving yourself what what are you unconsciously telling yourself about the task what what do you what do you unconsciously mm-hmm. believe about yourself you know what what are you what are you telling yourself about the kind of person that you are and and the kind of standards that you're setting for this task for example and if you mm-hmm. can almost have that silent conversation with yourself it can make it a little bit easier to to question and and change some of those assumptions change some of those messages to, to enable you to make some more progress but it, mm. it does require that that little bit of calm that little bit of quiet so however you can engineer that you know, you've got your hours exercise for the day or if you can put some put some earplugs in and, and just close your eyes for for five minutes or something then mm-hmm. that could be a really useful habit to get into mm. yeah and it doesn't have, sorry it doesn't have to be when when things are getting tough either you can do that as a reflection of mm-hmm. you know how i've been successful today give yourself the credit where it's due show yourself mm. a little bit of self-appreciation you know i managed to do this today even if it wasn't to the standard you wanted to or you know mm-hmm. think what what would you say to someone that you really really cared about if they were trying to do something that was really really difficult you praise them for their effort you praise them for the progress that you've made so why wouldn't you give yourself that same level of, of praise and, and, and credit yeah yeah, which is harder to do because for some reason we like to be hard on ourselves, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mm. and I, I, mean, I did, um, I was actually using this technique quite a lot recently with, with some of my coaching clients for lots of different reasons, but this this idea of the inner boardroom um, where it's in your head, you've got this 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 group of people who are to some degree guiding you mentoring mm-hmm. you influencing you advising you uh, it could be real you know it could be your parents your friends your, your colleagues um, some some old school friends uh, they could be fictional you could have i don't know winston churchill in there you could have uh jacinda hearn in there um mm-hmm. did i say her name right jacinda jacinda um yeah she's come out of this quite well i think a lot of people around the world are looking quite favorably on her um but yeah. that's an aside but yeah anybody who you think you know you, you've got a lot of respect for you've got a lot of time for uh, and who would have your best interests at heart almost have them sitting around this imaginary boardroom in your head and just asking them so what what advice would you give me right now what what would you say to me right now mm-hmm. um and how, taking some time out to, to think well, would they be would they be harsh on me would they be telling me you know you know you need to step this up you could do a little bit more maybe they would um, mm. maybe they'd say yeah, okay yeah you could do some more but give yourself a little bit of credit for what you have done and i think people find that find that really really useful if you've got someone in there who you know is a classic uh doer you know they they, they, they just get on with stuff mm. then what would they do and how would they go about it uh, and how could you sort of borrow some of their traits, as it were? Uh, mm-hmm. I quite, I quite like that idea. Mm. That's nice because it's almost getting out of your own head a bit and taking a step back. Which I think sometimes when you're, especially with procrastination, you're just thinking, "Oh, I need to do this. I've got to do this. Why can't I do it? I'm just going to go and clean the kitchen, or I'm going to do something else." And you can get quite in your head. So mm. actually, that's a great technique to just 
step back, see the bigger picture, and that probably takes some pressure off yeah. as well and and helps you to prioritize like kind of what you said earlier like if you're you know you've only got maybe a certain time throughout the day that you're going to be focused what are you going to focus on yeah well, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm following your lead here it's almost like you're leading me down a path it's a good path but you said the yeah. bigger picture and yeah that's another really useful tool for people who do procrastinate is well what is my bigger picture and it doesn't have mm. to be you know that grand i've got this um life goal this big five-year plan but it could be mm. you know your values it could be something that you do want to achieve and asking yourself is what i'm doing right now or what i'm not doing right now getting me closer to that goal uh, and mm. just whether it's literally having that written on a piece of paper on your wall or a little uh, little reminder uh, on your Trello board, or or what have you. This is what I'm aiming for. This is my this is my goal. and tell mm. people about it as well. That that increases that sense of accountability and and, and want to achieve. Is if mm -hmm. you know that you know other people are aware that you're working towards that. Yeah, um, and talking of that sort of accountability for people who don't work at home on their own usually. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not in this category, but do you have any, is there any advice or thoughts for people who are, who do find it really hard to do something without someone else in the room, even if they're not verbalizing um, a deadline or accountability, they're just, just at least their, their presence alone uh, is reminding someone to do the work. Is there anything that can be done for someone who's on their own and thinks, oh, I'm just not going to work. This is great. I'm at home. I'm going to go watch Netflix. I'm going to go play an Xbox. I'm going to cook. Um, yeah. I mean, they have to block to. it's that self if you don't have that kind of self-discipline yeah and but i really think that's a, that's a that's 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 a key thing that i would, you know I'd, I'd spend a lot of time working on that i don't have that self-discipline because i think mm. that just that phrase i don't have that self-discipline can be quite a limiting belief yeah um, and i'm sure you know I, I haven't yet met anybody i don't think that doesn't have a good deal of self-discipline in the right circumstances mm. now it could be to do with something they're really really passionate about really really interested in you know i'm sure they just to use your example i'm going to go and play netflix uh, watch netflix or play the xbox has that person mm. ever binge watched a whole series that's 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 self-discipline to a degree yeah. right you know has yeah. that person really you know achieved something uh, completed a, a really difficult game on the xbox that's self-discipline to a degree so that is a mm. that is a skill that they have in the right circumstances then the case then once you've appreciated that okay in the right circumstances i can be self-disciplined is how can i then manufacture the circumstances to be more successful and more self-disciplined in, in more circumstances mm. um and so so whatever that is whether it's gamification whether it's um interest levels whether it's reward whether it's comfort whatever it is then extrapolating those circumstances and replicating them but they have to want to achieve what they need to be self-disciplined about yeah um and this is gonna uh that that sense of that bigger picture that why what's in it for me what what would be different if i've achieved this and is it worth mm -hmm. it and i can't remember who who the quote was it's some famous sports coach anyway um it's something like there's two forms of pain in the world there's the pain of disappointment and there's the pain of self-discipline and if you if you if you mm -hmm. can tolerate the the latter you'll never achieve you'll never feel the former so if you can yeah you know, the, the benefit of the mm -hmm. pain of self-discipline is that you'll never have mm -hmm. that pain of disappointment um, mm. and i think that 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 translates really really well to the sporting environment um mm. perhaps it's not quite as tangible in the personal development yeah but it's real mm. and i guess it's like it's another muscle right the more you practice self-discipline the, the easier it becomes mm -hmm. um or the more you see wow i can actually achieve this if i sit down and do it mm. um and, it's and that's binary. Kind of cool. it's yeah it's not i am self-disciplined or i'm not mm. so that's that muscle thing is you know it's not that i have that muscle or i don't it's how developed is it and the more you use yeah. it, the more it gets so maybe i'm a two out of ten right now mm. and success for me is to get to three out of ten well what does three out of ten look like you know i can i can focus for 10 minutes on a task mm -hmm. okay yeah 
Um, now, to you, that that might be ten minutes seriously, Jeff. But to <laughs> me, that's that's a big improvement. And if I can get mm. to ten minutes, I can celebrate that. I can I can say, that's great. I give myself a pat on the back. I can go and watch an episode of something on Netflix, Tiger King. Mm. And then, okay, now my next challenge is to get from a three to a four. What does that mean? And just that mm. gradual sense of improvement. Again, writing the rules of the game to increase my chances mm -hmm. of success. Rewarding myself for these small incremental gains um and not comparing myself to anybody else just my own personal best if you like um, yeah because it's it's all we're all just navigating this new new territory um for some people it's a bit different for other people it's really different um and especially when you're throwing in technology maybe you you're you don't do zoom calls ever or you don't really skype that much so that's just a whole new thing and then having kids at home um and so I think it's kind of what you said of being kind to yourself and almost going with your energy of the day. If you, if you feel really um, you're in the zone, you're working, you might smash out hours and get loads done. The next day you might not. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. And rather fighting that and kind of beating yourself up for, for failing or for not doing it, um, it's probably more beneficial to just go with that feeling a bit more. Um, if your job allows. <laughs> um, especially here when a lot, where a lot of people work in tourism they are just not working anymore because there is not a job so they're at home doing whatever they want mm -hmm. and I feel like that's given me because I still have, have less work than usual but still have work to do I almost feel envious of people who don't have to do any work and it's mm -hmm. like oh they're just you know doing some crafting and going for bike rides and whatever they want and i kind of want to do that so i don't want to work and maybe it's like a childish thing of oh, everyone's getting a holiday and, and i know it's not it's not a holiday and a lot of people are struggling who are in that position um but i feel like that not all the time but has played played a part maybe even subconsciously in my uh pandemic procrastination yeah and uh, that that goes back I mean, you say it's a childish thing, but it's a timeless thing of that the grass is always greener. Mm, yeah. Um, and yeah, it might sound trite and you might not believe me, but there are a lot of people who in, in that scenario think, oh, do you know, I wish I had a job to give me some focus. I'm a bit bored. Mm -hmm. And so no matter what situation you're in, it always looks like someone else mm -hmm. has got it better, especially if you're looking on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Which I deleted bit, for that know, reason. That fear of missing uh, out. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah, t and, and that reframing of well, how might I be the lucky one? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and I and I do. I feel that I think oh, that's hey, that's great that I've got at least a few hours of day to work, yeah. and that is a focus, and that is something to be doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's interesting. It's it's definitely more more time to think at the moment, which is I think lots of different things popping up and different questions and different emotions. So it's just navigating that without going totally mad. Yeah. So I think to come back, I think a good way of sort of summarizing there is to come mm -hmm. back to your meditation point is that all these thoughts mm. are going on. Some of those thoughts can be really, really positive. Some of them can be less positive and just being mm. more mindful about them and, and channeling them to their most appropriate use, I think is, is probably the key to not just procrastination, but a, but a lot of self management throughout, throughout this time mm. and in general. Yeah, totally. I think doing it when you're, not in a crisis means that when you are in a crisis, you can handle it a little bit better. Mm. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thank you.